If you've dived, dove, divin, into the world of computer building, you might have noticed a common thread in most how-to guides out there on the internet. They almost all end showing you how to configure Windows after you're done piecing everything together. But what if you've grown tired of Cortana, the start menu, or lack thereof, and that frowny-faced blue screen of death? And you want a different kind of computing experience? Well, you could choose one of a number of free Linux distributions, as we discussed in this episode, but some people find themselves irresistibly drawn to the interface of Mac OS, just not to the high price tag. Apple says, tough luck to you, bud. But fear not, a community has popped up around building Hackintoshes, PCs that run Mac OS on non-Apple hardware. But how does this process work? Just throw Mac OS onto a USB drive, boot from it, and click install? Yeah, no. First of all, Apple only guarantees compatibility for Mac OS with a very limited number of hardware configurations. Theirs. Unlike Windows, which is supposed to work on any x86 or x86-64 based system, provided it meets the minimum requirements. So how in the world, then, are you supposed to know what will be compatible? Well, although there isn't really a good way to know if the Extreme Gamer Over 9000 motherboard will work with macOS outside of just trying it and seeing what happens, the Hackintosh community has actually compiled lists of components that users have had good luck with on websites like OSX86 and DSDT. All right then, so once you've built your system or verified that your existing one is compatible, the next step is to get a copy of Mac OS. Typically, this means using an actual Mac to download the latest version through the App Store or buying an older version on optical media directly from Apple. So you got your grubby little hands on Mac OS. Now you need to create a bootable USB using some special software. Unibeast is a popular one. Simply click through the menus and indicate whether you'll be installing Mac OS on a newer UEFI capable system or on an older computer and your boot media will be ready. But before you shove it into your PC, you'll want to tweak your BIOS settings. This typically involves disabling features designed more for Wintel machines that macOS won't play nicely with, such as VTD, CFG lock, secure boot, IO serial port, and even USB 3.0 if you're rocking something older, like a motherboard with an Intel 5 series chipset. Enable XHCI handoff and you are ready to install macOS from your USB drive. But after you've done this, now you gotta make your macOS target disk bootable, as it doesn't happen automatically. A popular option is to use a utility called MultiBeast, which will not only make your machine bootable, but will attempt to install additional necessary software, like drivers. Note, however, that you'll probably still need to find Mac drivers for your graphics card on your own. And that's it! Theoretically, by this point, you're good to go. But hold on a minute. I've heard that Apple is extremely unhappy with people building Hackintoshes. Will I get in trouble? Will Apple sue me? Will I do hard time in a white collar minimum security prison? So here's the deal with that. Downloading Mac OS from the Apple Store is free but the fine print stipulates that you may only install it on a bona fide Mac system. So that means that technically, even though you downloaded it for free from Apple, it's software piracy because you are in breach of the end user license agreement. So, Apple indeed does strongly frown upon people building and using Hackintosh systems. But with that said, the chances of Apple coming after a single user that just wants to use a Hackintosh at home are virtually nil. And if they do find out somehow, the most they are likely to do is something like ban your machine from the App Store. Though it should be noted, they did sue a company back in 2009 that was marketing and selling Hackintoshes, which could actually be considered a crime under US federal law.
So the takeaway then is that we're not telling you what you should do. We are not your legal advisors. But if you are gonna dabble in hackintoshing, do it for personal use, not to make a quick buck. And in any event, you are far more likely to run into technical rather than legal issues. iMessage is infamously tough to run on a Hackintosh, and you'll probably find other things, small or deal-breaking, that aren't exactly on par with the authentic Mac experience. But there are plenty of resources online to help both newbies and veterans, so go check them out and just hope that Steve Jobs isn't watching you from beyond the grave. Do you run a small business? Are you a freelancer? Do you have lots of work to do, but you just can't get organized enough to find all the time to do it? Well, FreshBooks is here to help you. It's a cloud-based accounting software that's designed for the way that you work. It's a simple, easy way for people who aren't necessarily numbers people to keep track of their business stuff. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can track your hours. You can track your expenses. You can accept deposits from your clients. You can even set up online payments with just a couple clicks and get paid up to four days faster. And a really cool one to me is that you can see when your client has seen the invoice and put an end to that, oh, did you get the invoice I sent? Oh, no, I didn't get it yet. Could you send it again? Yeah, I'll need a few days to process that. No, no, enough of that. That's a Terrible. So FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our viewers and to claim it, all you gotta do is go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie linked down below and enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching. Like, dislike, leave a comment, check out our other channels and make sure you subscribe.